Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihil kareem. Amma ba'd. We've been uh, talking about um, the prohibited elements in transaction. So we talked about the riba, the first uh, prohibited elements. And uh, we discussed uh, two types of riba. We, we discussed uh, two types of riba. One is uh, riba al-fadl. And then, uh, the, sorry, the first one is a riba and nasi'a, which one from, from Quran. The other one is a riba in cash, riba al-fadl, uh, which one is from uh, sunnah. So now we are going to talk about the next uh, prohibited element uh, in, 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 in transactions, which is actually a gharar. Yeah. This is a gharar, literally uh, means uncertainty or ambiguity or danger. Technically, it refers to a sale contract, uh, which is attractive to the purchaser in its form, but unknown and uh, ambiguous uh, in its substance. So if you remember, um, uh, we talked about, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the difference between Tawurir uh, and Ububun, uh, right? I think uh, you, 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 came, you, you, came, you came to know. That's because last time we talked about it in your quiz as well. Um, the, 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 the difference between uh, uh, deception is something that, you know, you go with the ignorance of the buyer or the seller. The other one is actually the intention of hiding something, right? So now, this one uh, is is actually, uh, of course, it's all the same thing, but this one is uh, something uh, that uh, could become the element which can um, uh, which can make your transaction invalid. So, so that's that's how it known. Uh, so that's how it's been defined as a. Uh, this, uh, it, it refers to a sale contract which is attractive to the purchaser, right? So it could be uh, attractive, maybe it's not. It may be from the box. When you see the box, it looks like it's everything, but when you open it, it's not. Uh, so, but it is unknown and ambiguous in its substance. The parties are, one of them may not know what could be achieved from the contract. Um, the Quran prohibits all those dealings where the intention is to deceive one of the parties in a contract, the Quran states that Muslims should not divorce uh, one another's property wrongfully. So basically speaking, um, you have all uh, the three pillars of contract has uh, been completed. It's already there. And then you can see the purpose and effect, the conditions, everything is there. But this one is actually a uh, seller has an intention uh, not to show the reality of the product. Maybe uh, from, from like, I, like I said, when you read the label, when you read the description, it looks fine. But um, there are some defect inside uh, that particular thing which actually um, the, the, the seller doesn't want to reveal because if he reveals, then um, the buyer definitely will not buy it. Um, so, but the, the, the seller wants to, uh, you know, uh, hide it, hide it from the buyer. The Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, has specifically prohibited transactions um, uh, which involved elements of a gharar. These includes transactions determined by throwing stones, by mere touching without proper inspection or by chance. The main reason for the prohibition of a gharar or that contracts involving a gharar are fraudulent. They also amount to obtaining the property of others unlawfully uh, which may subsequently lead to disputes and disagreements between the parties. So, so we've been discussing this, um, you know, uh, every single time we talk about um, the, um, the, the, the executing of uh, the transaction or validating the transaction. We want to make sure that uh, there must be the mutual consent by the both parties. At the same time, it has to be on mutual benefits, you know, 
I'm selling something to you and then I'm taking some money from you. So now you are taking the stuff from me and I'm taking the money from you. So now the mutual benefit must be there completed. The reason you want to, you want to buy the product from me is because you believed that uh, the product that I have, which will serve the purpose of why you are buying. Am I right? Because the money that I'm going to take from you is actually going to serve the purpose because your money is not the fraudulent, the counterfeit money. It's not the invalid currencies or whatsoever. It is the valid money that you are paying me. Let's say you are paying me 100 ringgit is a valid and it is always, uh, you know, I can use that money for many, many purposes. Uh, at the same time, when you are buying a stuff from me, which is equivalent to 100 ringgit, let's say uh, you want to buy a printer from me, right? And then uh, I have to give you the printer, which means that it has to serve the purpose. Let's say I sell you my printer, but I'm saying, uh, 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 there is a toner inside. Usually it, uh, the printer comes with the, what they call it cartridge or the toner or the ink, whatever that you have. Let's say if you have the laser printer or you have the uh, inkjet printer, which means that, uh, you know, the cartridge printer, uh, which comes with ink. When you cannot measure the ink, uh, whether it is it, it is in complete form or not. So now I say, okay, this is the printer I'm selling you. This printer can print 10,000 copies. So now you are paying me that money, uh, thinking and believing that, you know, you can get this printer and then you can get 10,000 papers printed. But within one week time, you are coming to know that it's not true. Uh, it can only print to hundred or thousand. Then I'm hiding something. That's because I just want to sell that product to you, which is not serving the purpose. Again, you have to spend more money on it. So this is all, uh, you know, uh, if I keep some information away from you, so that the things will happen. So now let us uh, see uh, what are the causes uh, that lead to horror. Gharar may arise when the subject matter of a contract is non-existent or not deliverable or cannot be acquired or it is not clearly defined. Uh, it, it could be anything, for example, I cannot, uh, I, I'm selling to you something which is not existing at all. Uh, I cannot simply come and say that there is a, uh, fish in something. So let me, uh, this is a special one, or maybe there is a stone or something. This is a special one, which is non-existent. I cannot do that. I have to show you the proof that I have the product that I want to sell to you. All right. So it could be anything that, for example, I cannot deliver to you. Uh, for example, if it, it could be anything like you know, I, I want to give it to you. There is an animal in the forest or something, you know, special thing, which is actually not deliverable to you. I cannot sell it to you, uh, which is not um, clearly defined, also cannot sell to you. So that's the example given here. It's like a fish in the water or sale of a bird in the air, the sale of fetus. Uh, the fetus also, we are not so sure whether it will come out or not. Uh, the fetus in the warm of an animal, the sale of a running away animal. These are the classical exam examples. I want you to get the new examples when you write your answers. Yeah. In all these cases, the sale is void due to the existence of uncertainty. Huh? Because if you are not certain about something, meaning to say the subject matter, it is not clearly defined. As simple as that. Remember going back to pillar number three. What is it? We talked about pillar number one is actually how. Number two is who. Number three is what? 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 Exactly. Thank you. What? 
<laughs> exactly. So now, when we talk about what, meaning the subject and object matter, isn't it? So the subject and object matter, if you look into the conditions of the subject and object matter, one of them is what? Well-determined, well-defined. So I cannot sell something to you, which I say, okay, there is a thing, and then I'm not, I want to sell it to you. And then you heard from some other sources uh, that, you know, that thing is there, but until I do not clearly define, or I could, I do not clearly, you know, sometimes, you know, it's like a game. Uh, you know, I don't tell everything, uh, I, but somehow I make you understand, uh, somehow, you got to know you, somehow you you learn about that stuff maybe from internet or from friends or from other social media you know there is a thing that people are selling but if you come and ask me you will tell okay do you have that stuff then uh, i will say yes but not necessarily i have the same stuff that you heard from internet or social media or friends so now i'm not giving you more information uh but you just want to buy because you are eager to hold it you are eager to eh, buy that stuff because people do normally these days so this is where actually a lot of happens uh, remember it could be a special drink or it could be a special you know uh, a special maybe like a special shoe or special wallet or you know so many things uh, even some cosmetic items when people are selling even tablets you know that the medical tablets, even you know, so, you know, sometimes what they call it, um, energy tonics, uh, like uh, energy tablets. Even sometimes memory. Okay, you know, people say, okay, you, do, you, you, you don't have proper memory, so please go and buy this. You know, I, I heard this from internet saying, uh, you know, this tablet you take every day, one pill, then within thirty days you will become like a, uh, like 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 a twelve GB memory. Uh, <laughs> so. You see, you heard the things all over the internet, this and that. So now this is where actually things is not clearly defined when you buy from, uh, unless you go to the medical shop uh, and then you go to any uh, shop, the proper uh, fully licensed uh, drug seller, then there is a possibility that, you know, you get the right product. But simply you, because now uh, we also, do not buy only from the official e-commerce websites. Now people even sir? selling. Sorry, yes. Uh, I want to ask if it uh, regards of the um the medical ones, which are the cosmetic ones. Yeah. It is it is all due to the uh, advertisement, right? Correct. Yeah. So if the advertisement doesn't say anything, then the business will be okay. The contract will be fine, just fine. Exactly, but the the, the, the problem here, you see, uh, the thing that I was talking about, there are some official, uh, you know, e-commerce website, whereby they keep uh, the guarantee and warranty within themselves. Let's say you buy a stuff from them, and if did it, if it didn't work, then they are fully responsible to give you back the money or, you know, uh, to, to, to replace the product. That one is fine because you are good, you know their brand. For example, there is a company which, is, which the brand is very famous and then they are coming up with a new product. Then there is a reliability that, you know, that company is fine. If in case there is a problem, if in case there is a problem, then, you know, you actually can, um, uh, um, uh, uh, go back and get the refund or maybe, you know, you can even sue the company if the, the things is wrong. You know, many, many companies like that in back in uh, America and some other countries, you know, even, even, even the child products, even uh, it keep on using it and then something happened and then the lady went to the court and then she fight for it and then she got many millions in return, you know, the things are there like that. But the particular thing that I'm talking now is actually those websites, uh, those companies, which is not actually holding or taking any responsibilities. They just want to, you know, okay, these are the products available right now. Uh, we got it from some country. We only have few stocks. Better you hurry and you buy. It's a scam. 
you know they say is a special uh, special coffee or green tea or you know this kind of thing even the tablets like i told you we don't know maybe they show you some kind of uh, advertisements but they are not fully completely firm uh, companies and uh, when you go back and call back and then definitely they are not going to uh, return your calls because they are not even completely registered company so this is where the error happens right so just do not just go with the uh, the advertisement make sure that they are completely registered and then and then go with the company which has been registered that's good for you because there is a they are bearing the responsibility this is what i uh, i'm trying to you know uh, tell you do not only go with the advertisement yes of course if the advertisement serve the purpose then you take it but if there is something wrong make sure that you have to return uh, to that company which is completely registered if it is not then you know the rest because it will be like a scam or something and then you call back they will not attend the call so we have to be very careful that's why uh, this uh, internet literacy is very very important let's, let's say you are all mashallah you know you understand uh, the language you understand the scheme and everything but people up there in kampong just recently using the telephone handphones and then they see something and then they just spend some money to buy those things so this is all comes with a gharar yeah okay so uh, gharar also um, uh, may also arise um, uh, when the effect of a certain contract is not known see now we talked about purpose and effect see here is a effect if the effect is not known and one of the parties may not know what he would achieve from the contract example contract of employment ijara may contain elements of gharar when the rights and duties of the parties are not clearly defined uh, it could happen because uh, there is a house is it the entire house is for you uh, you just pay only 500 ringgit that seems like you know the house is full of uh, like full of furnitures and everything it is impossible to have for 500 ringgit it might go for 3000 ringgit then you take that thing and then you go inside and then they say okay this room you can open that bathroom you cannot use it and these stairs you cannot do it you cannot cook anything in the in the kitchen so now what is the purpose of the house so this is all actually if it is not well defined it could lead to gharar yeah similarly a musharaka and mudaraba contract may also suffer from gharar if the percentage for the division of profit is not clearly defined such contracts are therefore considered void on the ground of a gharar or uncertainty as they may cause harm to one of the parties and injustice unjustified enrichment to the to the other um, so this one sometimes happen you know when you do business in musharaka mudaraba any other contract that you do sometimes you know you you want to do some investment you pay the money and suddenly they say um, yes um, but there is a, a yearly fee for this. There is a monthly fee for this, you know? They keep on adding and adding and adding in your investment. And then at the end of the day, you put your money, but you don't get your investment. Or you don't get any return profit. Uh, so this is also, a, that's why it has to be clearly defined. Uh, even even we, today, I tell you, when you take your uh, children, let's say your siblings, you take them to, you know, starting from kindergarten, you take them, the school or whatsoever ask them in front how much is going to cost for me the whole year they will be telling you know it's only 500 per month it only you know 200 ringgit per month it's only going to be like thousand ringgit the whole year they will be telling you like that but once you started uh, sending your siblings to the school then you know after one month they will say you have to pay this fee that fee huh? Additionally, this one, additionally, that one. So this is all involving gharar. Unless they give you the black and the black and white. Okay, this is the entirely fee. This is what exactly. Okay, this is actually what we really want to see. Right? This one can avoid a gharar, but if they didn't do, then it will lead to a gharar. Yeah. Uh, also, frequently ambiguities in a certain contract are designed to commit fraud and cheat one of the parties and lead to unlawful profit to the other 
they are therefore distinguished from uncertainties um, okay that may exist concerning the possibilities of loss and profit in a lawful business these are not meant to cheat others so this is where actually i want to come and talk about you know what exactly the difference between gharar and risk all right so i you know i understand i give you everything about gharar yeah i gave you all the examples about gharar but here you need to understand that there is no business uh without a risk uh you know this is where there is a completely entire uh, new uh, expertise available today what we call risk management there is no economics without a risk management there is no banking sectors without risk management so now thinking about a risk and horror it might look the same but there are many differences this is what actually we are going to talk about uh, after this um like example um uh, okay horror is also distinguished from uncertainty or risk all right that is naturally associated with certain business ventures manufacturers importers exporters and traders are uncertain whether their products and goods could find a suitable market or not you know if uh, you become uh, the uh, co partner like for example you become the business partner and then you are investing something and then your other partner says that okay we want to do this and uh, definitely you know we can make this money this and that but we are not so sure about it because this is not we call a gharar because uh, the other partner he is not you know he is not he is not like what we call it he is not the uh, astrologist <laughs> he cannot predict the future no one can predict the future so so business means there is always profit and loss always comes nobody thought in february last year oh sorry still this year yeah because this is the last day of the year by the way 31st 12th december 31st december 2020 so in february this year nobody thought that the market will become like this in march and april and may see what happens entirely right so this is what we didn't know we couldn't predict the future so now uh, same thing goes to any business um they are uh, uncertain about the amount of profit and possibility of loss this type of uncertainty is not intentionally created remember the key word is what intentionally creating if someone intentionally want to uh, dismiss guide you um, intentionally want to cheat you then it becomes a error if there is no intention but it just happened because of the market or because of some other reasons maybe sometimes natural disaster might you know make things maybe because of some other people's you know uh, loss sometimes you know can make it even sometimes remember your money that you are holding you know for example uh, 50 ringgit in your pocket not necessarily has to be 50 ringgit uh, value tomorrow because if us dollar uh, go down you know the entire worldwide currencies will go down this is how today's market is actually too much you know it's it's became like you know it's it's completely dependent on um the big uh, the the big fish in the market i mean i'm talking about the shark in the market which is the us dollar if us dollar goes down everything will go down that's the reason why so we are not so sure about we will hold the 50 ringgit but the the value of the 50 ringgit tomorrow and necessarily has to be the same uh, 50 ringgit like today like you remember right like few days few years back for one ringgit you can buy this 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 now you cannot buy those things uh, for 10 ringgit you can buy this 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 today you cannot buy those things this is what you know the time value to money so this is all happening by the way this is not called gharar by the way it happens because of the market mechanism yeah the parties do not um okay the parties do not uh, leave success of the business to chance unlike gambling where pure chance decides the winner and the loser 
business, the parties have to render all the necessary efforts in order to make profit. So this is difference gambling. We will talk about gambling, which is the next um, prohibited elements in transaction. This type of risk is combined with efforts and that may eventually lead to profit. Okay, now let me give you what are the key differences between uh, horror and risk. Yeah, that's I think uh, the, the last part to talk about. Number one, Gara refer to potentially deceptive ambiguity, all right? In contrast, uh, type of uncertainty is not designed to cheat. Remember the first point is Gara potentially deceptive, uh, risk is not designed to cheat. Number two, Gara is not expected because it is not something that you, you, will, you will get surprised when you open the box. What happened? What is it? You will surprised when you print the printer, right? So horror is not anticipated, not expected, but horror, uh, but uh, risk is actually always anticipated because they will tell you, okay, I do this, but you know, um, I'm not very sure this product may go like this. So that's the seller will tell you, you know, even I, I had uh, recently, you know, that my tire got punctured. So when I went, uh, the puncture was the hole was, you know, a little bit longer, bigger. Then he told me, I, I take the money from you, but I don't give you the warranty. That's because the hole is bigger in the tire, so it might burst again. So he is already giving me, you know, the heads, not the, 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 the headshot. He already giving me, uh, you know, the, 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 the warning. So this is what we call a risk, not a horror. Yeah. Um, number three, remember, most important thing. Horror is always directed at another person's while risk is taken by the person himself. Because when I buy, I take the risk also. I say, okay, okay, I will buy you a secondhand car. Uh, I also willing to take a risk that, you know, there could be possibly the problem with the tire or the problems with the engine. Okay, I'm willing to take risk. Uh, I want to do this. You know, sometimes we always say, okay, why I want to take this study? Okay, anyway, I want to take risk. So I came to this. Uh, study. Maybe you might be thinking about why did I choose um, this particular section of Fake for Economics with the Dr. Aslam Akbar? Uh, okay, maybe I want to take a risk with uh, Dr. Aslam Akbar. All right, maybe you decided to take this. Hopefully, it's it going well, I hope. All right, so these are the examples for uh, taking risk by, by, by himself, by yourself. For instance, in case of sale, uh, the seller may leave the some terms and conditions ambiguous in order to cheat the purchaser. However, in case of the risk, it is seller himself who takes the risk of whether the goods would be sold or not. Number four, very important. Gharal arises when information is not disclosed. Uh, because the information is not disclosed, meaning the information, they will not give you all the information. That's what gharal is. But in risk, they give you all this information. This is the terms and condition. This is what happened, what happened. This one, two, three, four, five. Everything they will give you all the information. It's like an open book, yeah? Okay. How to avoid a gharar? Very simple. In order to eliminate the possibility of gharar, Muslim juries have laid in few conditions. Remember, number one, the condition. Uh, make sure that all the contract conditions are concerning offer acceptance are completely fulfilled. Number two, make sure that, you know, uh, that the quality and the quantity of the product must be agreed upon by the properties. And also, meaning to say, clearly defined, clearly distribution, meaning the in, in Ijara, it must be clearly defined. If it is Musharaka, Mudaraba, must be clearly distributed. So this is all must be clear. And then uh, this is what actually uh, you need to make sure that if you make sure that when you are buying something, uh, all the conditions are fulfilled, everything is clear, all clearly defined, then you won't be able to get uh, you will be able to, you know, get the horror. And no one will cheat you. Okay. But this is all there. The next uh, small topic is very important. There are some uncertainties, uncertainties in our life, which can be tolerated. You know, you don't have to simply, you know, um, um, uh, avoid everything. You know, there are some tolerated uncertainty which means that, you know, the uncertainty is very, very minimal and also customarily accepted. Those are the things you don't have to go and fight for it. Those are the things customarily accepted. Everybody do that, so it's all right. For example, the parking areas, I always say this, 
you know, when I go to the parking areas, I park my car, I have to pay per entry, let's say three ringgit, five ringgit, whether you stay five minutes, whether you stay 30 minutes, you have to pay the same money. You cannot come back and say, no, no, I pay or I stay only five minutes. So three ringgit or five ringgit must be, you know, you know, uh, divided into that. Then I have to pay only for like one ringgit or 50 cent. These are the things customarily accepted, which means tolerated uncertainties. Yeah. Okay. Similarly, in Mudaraba, Mudaraba, the amount of efforts would be Mudarib cannot be known and defined in advance. Neither they can be quantified because we know one partner give 50,000 ringgit, the other partner has to work on that thing. So one person put money, the other person is actually working on it. So we know we cannot say that uh, how much money you can tell this is the quantity of the money. But about the effort, you cannot put in writing. I mean, you, can, you cannot say that, okay, I will put this much effort because it is all we don't know because you trust him right that's the reason why you give him your money so you have to trust him so that he has to work on you if he didn't work then you have to take back the money but we cannot clearly put it like how much he will work how much money how much hours this and that cannot be this is a tolerated one yeah okay that's all from me uh so um we'll continue again uh the 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 the, uh, the gambling the mice here in our next class all right Okay, any questions?